Girardi trial, day two, when we're actually getting to the point where we're hearing from some witnesses and we're starting to see a little bit of a witness testimony about what it is that Tom Girardi has been accused of and really what these people were told by Mr. Girardi and how they were handled. And I don't know, do you have some uh, opening thoughts for us, Stuart? Well, it seems clear that the defense is going to be uh, twofold. Number one, that this Christopher Kamen is the true evil person here that moved things around. It wasn't Tom Girardi. And then uh, Tom is, is going to have to explain away all of the communications that he had with his clients where he consistently told at least the two clients that testified yesterday that he had to get a judge's order before he could give them more money or that there were, the judge was holding it up or the arbitrator was holding it up or the mediator was holding up the payment to the client. So he's going to have to explain that. So his defense is, I didn't have anything to do with this. Well, then how are you going to explain why you were constantly telling at least apparently multiple clients here, and there's probably more, that, you know, I can't give you your money because there's this nefarious, there's this court order out there somewhere that has to, to be signed before I can give you your money. That seemed to be the MO. And then the other thing I, I, I noted was that one of the witnesses testified that every time he called Tom Girardi, Tom would rush him off the phone as if Tom was very busy and running from one meeting to the next. So he just would give the guy very short time on the phone. And then the guy said, look, I trusted Tom Girardi. I trusted, I trusted the name Tom Girardi and everything that he had done. And I, I never thought in a million years that I wouldn't get paid the money that I was owed. So that seems to be the themes that are developing for me so far. What are your thoughts? Yeah, and there's a great article by Amanda Bronstad. She's with Law.com. She's been doing some excellent reporting. And there's two witnesses in particular, Kathleen Rui Gomez and her son, Joseph Rui Gomez, who was in a horrible fire. Uh, they sued Pacific Gas and Electric. And they were told by Mr. Girardi at a mediation in 2013 that he settled their case for $5 million. That was false. He settled the case for $52 million. And of course, 52 is the gross. You still have to factor in attorney's fees and costs and things. But even the net to the client was going to be a, a substantially more than $5 million. And uh, that's all that they were told. And they weren't even paid the $5 million. It took them a year to even get anything after Mr. Girardi and out of his office. And Joseph Rui Gomez testified that Mr. Girardi would always butter me up, call me babe, stuff like that, and that he was very intimidating anytime he would start to question what exactly is going on here, then all of a sudden the attitude would change and he would become very intimidating. It doesn't sound to me like somebody who's suffering from dementia and is confused. It sounds to me like somebody who knows precisely how to thread the needle and butter people up, but also get intimidating when they start to ask too many tough questions is what it sounds like is happening. Uh, the other interesting thing is that then Mr. Girardi's defense attorney got up and pointed out that these people were being represented not just by Tom Girardi, but other attorneys in their office. And I think what he was trying to intimate is, well, other people lied too. You know, it wasn't just Tom Girardi lying to you. It was the other people lying to you as well. And thereby, I think they're trying to shift the blame. And that goes back to the argument we talked about yesterday, where Tom Girardi wants to push the blame of this off onto other people, the CFO in particular, and uh, play the you know innocent victim side and say, I didn't know what was going on. I was going into deeper dementia. I was confused. And these other people in my office were lying and doing things that I wasn't aware of. So that's kind of what you're seeing in terms of the defense questioning and, and the angle I think that they're taking. Yeah, well, one thing I noticed too, Keith, was that I didn't know if you read about this, but I wanted to know your, your insights on it. Apparently, Tom Jardy got into a little tip with his lawyer yesterday in court and said something loud enough for a reporter to be able to take it down and report on it. Do you know anything about that? I did. I did read about that. So apparently he said something to his lawyer about, you don't know. You don't, I was there. I know better than you. And it probably was a disagreement about strategy. And the thing that caught my eye about that is it goes back to this whole issue of, is Tom Girardi truly suffering from dementia, confused, doesn't know what's going on? You know, that's his argument. And then here he is in court telling us, you know, yelling and not yelling, but 
they were having a disagreement and they were trying to say it in hushed tones, but they could be overheard in the courtroom uh, where he's trying to tell his lawyer what to do and he's not doing it right. And I was there and you weren't. And so it definitely uh, suggested to me that there probably is more capacity there than, than what uh, Tom Jardy has said. Yeah, that, that was my takeaway from it as well. And I just don't know if that conversation took place in front of the jury or not, but if it did, uh, you know, jurors notice those things and uh, the issue of whether he has the capacity to be there, if he's arguing vehemently with his lawyer and he's making strong points, that doesn't sound like somebody that has diminished capacity to, to me. Yeah, it does not. And then there was another uh, witness who, much smaller case, she was entitled to half a million dollars, was not paid that. She only received less than half of what she was owed, so she said under under uh, examination and so, you know, it's not so much the size of the payment in that case, but it's still the same, it's still the same uh, crime. It's still the same unethical behavior, even though the amounts are in the multiple millions. And the interesting thing about the Joseph Rui Gomez, who was testifying, is that that case was actually referred over by another law firm, and that other law firm had to sue Tom Girardi to try and get their portion of the fee, which I don't think they were ever paid either. So a lot of collateral damage, a lot of people hurt in terms of these actions that were um, allegedly going on. And now we have testimony to try and help establish that proof uh, with the firm of Girardi and Keys. Yeah, well, it's going to be fun to see uh, what the next, uh, I mean, obviously not fun for the people that went through this, but it'll be interesting for us uh, as the case continues to develop and we can report back on it tomorrow and uh, hopefully we can have some further developments to report. Yeah, and we'll keep everybody updated and we'll keep going through our thoughts on this case as it unravels. 